Welcome to Trail Manners, the podcast so dedicated to mountain trails and running that they broadcast out of a 78 Volkswagen bus in the mountains. Who does that? Eric and Joel are your hosts and will bring you the trail life as you may have not heard it before. You hear about everything from gear reviews, nutrition to keep you upright and moving forward, and they'll even bring guests into the bus for conversations that you won't hear anywhere else. It's time for some running adventures on a higher elevation. The old 78 Volkswagen bus is fired up and headed to the mountains. Here are your hosts for Trail Manners, proudly representing the 801 with their passion and love for the trails, Eric Manning and Joel Hatch. Welcome to the Trail Manners Podcast, episode number 53. Today, we're going to be talking with recent Grand Slammer, Tommy Barlow. We'd also like to take a moment to say thank you to Intermountain Surgery Center and Orthopedics for helping make this show possible. The new center is the home to the McKady Surgical Center, Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, McKady Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Clinic, Colton Harrison Clinic, Pharmacy, and Imaging Services. Our experts will help you get back to doing the things you love using state-of-the-art equipment, including six fully integrated surgical suites, therapy pools, mobility garden, sports court, and more. Intermountain Surgery Center and Orthopedics, where experience and technology meet. You can reach them at 801-38-SPORT. So if this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Trail Manners podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at trailmanners.com. Come back often, and please feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Trail Manners. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get after it. All right, before we jump into episode 53, we got a contest alert. That's right. Beep, beep, beep. Contest alert. What we have for you, thanks to our good friends over at Palmer Divide Run Company, PD Run Co. on Instagram. They're in Palmer Lake, Colorado home of Colorado's most okayest race team. That's Colorado's most okayest race team. We have two Solomon Advanced Skin S-Lab belt sets. Okay, these retail at 70 bucks. PD Runco went ahead, sent over two of these for a contest. Can you believe it? So thanks, guys, over at PD Runco. You're awesome. Hope to see you around Thanksgiving time. So uh, we'll touch base. So right now, all you got to do with this episode is go to our website. Why do you need one of these? They're 70 bucks. They're sweet. Right? We have two of them to give away for free. Leave a comment. Why do you need one? We're going to announce the winners on our Dirt and Vert um, on our Monday on our website as well. So, again, leave a comment, contest. Thanks, PD Runco. Go check them out on Facebook and Instagram. Killer dudes. All right. Great shop. Thanks again. Contest. Two. Advanced Skin. S-Lab Belts from Solomon. For free. $70 retails each. All you got to do is leave a comment. All right, good luck. Now let's get on with the show. All right, welcome to another episode of the Trail Manners Podcast. We are on number 53. It's a nice early morning. We are in Studio 78. She uh, took I-15, I-84, got here. T- I left yesterday, got here this morning. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> it, uh, but we're at the uh, a pretty fun place. We've been here once before. We have, almost a year ago, yeah, right? Right, exactly. Pretty Well, yeah, pretty close. Yeah. So this is uh, the Wasatch 100 start line area. Yes. Parking lot. Parking lot. Location. Yes. We're totally creeping out in the, the van in the start area. So we pulled up, and I had to pull in to have the door open to look at the mountains because they look good. The colors are changing. And we've got a special guest in. I said special because he is special, right? I think so. So we've got Tommy back half Barlow. That's right. The back half. Right? right? <laughs> so thanks for joining us this morning. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. He's happy to be here. I was really glad that uh, when I pulled up and I saw where you guys were parked that they removed the porta potty. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but this is traditionally the location of the porta potty. We're familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just it's just a good view. They should have porta potty with a window. It's, it is. Yeah. They should put a rear right? view on that one. Yep. That'd be sweet. <laughs> so we're, we we got Tommy here. You've had a busy summer. Busy. Right? So yeah, that's why we we got you down the downtime. So Tommy just finished the Grand Slam of ultra running. Yeah. Which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's not a little task. No, it's right? pretty pretty big. So you start, first of all, before we even get started, I got to know, how in the world did you get into Western States? <laughs> I think everyone is wondering the same thing. Uh, in fact, the, the way that I found out, I was moping in my bathroom after trying a run because my hip was jacked up. 
and my phone went off, and I got a text, and I look at it, and I believe uh, the text was something along the lines of, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And I thought, you jerk, what did I do? Now, who <laughs> sent this to you? This is Zach Marion. Okay. Yes. So, you jerk, something along the lines of, one effing ticket. <laughs> and I thought, what? <laughs> you jerk, one ticket. What is he talking about? Got pulled over? And then I then I then I started to look at it and so all of a sudden my Facebook was blowing up and someone else posted Tommy Barlow got drawn for Western States and I this like most people are going to really hate me even more but I didn't even know the lottery was that day. <laughs> oh my and, gosh. And I had put in the lottery um, almost by chance. I, it wasn't really like on my radar. What happened was I was on Instagram one day and I saw Strava's account. And they said, hey, look, if you want to run Western States, you got better odds to win our contest than you do the lottery. Right. So here's the rules. You write up a story. Tell us why you'd want to run Western States. And uh, part of it was you had to actually be in the lottery. Because right. Because then if you won their contest, you would be legal. Right. So part step one, go register for the lottery. Step two, write a story. I thought I had a cool story. Wrote it. Obviously didn't win. <laughs> Someone had cancer. <laughs> oh, always beats you, right? You got so, trumped on that. Yeah. yeah. So get trumped on that. They they go. They take their win, and and I forgot about. it. I wrote it off. I didn't think it was even a thing. And and then uh, yeah, I get those all of a sudden messages blowing up, texts going off, and it was it was bittersweet um, for me because I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna run Western States, and then it was like, oh my gosh, I can't run right now. Like my, I right. was I was literally in a spot where I was hobbling around and and wondering what on earth I'm gonna do. Um, but in, in the back of my head, uh, I knew what I was going to do because I was, I, like, just the year before I had talked to, or a few months before, really, when, when Josh Holmes had finished the Grand Slam. That was the first time I'd even really heard about it and knew about it. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm new to the trail running world, and it's weird because I go from first-timer to Grand Slammer in less than a year. <laughs> I ran the bear. In September, which was my qualifier. You punk. I'm you a total punk. You're making so <laughs> many <laughs> friends Everyone right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I, I didn't appreciate what western states was i'll admit that i know people have tried harder and worked longer to get in that thing and haven't been lucky enough and and i i'm the punk that shows up on the scene and gets in and and i had had lunch with uh, josh asking him just hey how do i finish my first hundred miler because he just finished wasatch and i had i had bear coming up in a week so he gave me tips and i was like what's wrong with you how come you're running a hundred miler every week and he's like well i did the grand slam and not only did he do the Grand Slam, but he threw in bad water in between. So oh, well, there you, you guys, go. You guys are masochists. But, <laughs> you know, so he t- starts telling me about it, and he had told me, look, the key is Western States. If you right. get into Western States, yeah. then you're into the Slam. And if you get into Western States, you got to do it. So, right. so that's where I was at. I, I draw out, and in my head, I immediately go, i got to do the Slam. I got to because that's it. a natural <laughs> thing to <laughs> do, yeah, right? That's what do. Yeah, because yeah, you know you yeah. don't know your. So because uh, you don't Western. know any better at that point. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, right? I had no clue. I had no clue what I was up against. What I was doing. It just like this thought in my head of, hey, I'm in. I got to do the slam, and and uh, I'll still say to this very day, I think the hardest part of the whole slam was convincing my wife and you know telling her that I'm going to do the slam. We, we were right up in Farmington Canyon, and we were on a trail when I told her. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go for the slam. Right, and, and, and her reaction was? She's like, you can't even run. Like, <laughs> you're not going to do the slam. Well, that's and, a good start instead yeah. of there's no way in hell you're doing yeah. this, Tommy. Well, you got her in, like, the comfort zone, right? I did. Yeah, I the put endorphins her in the mountains. flowing. Yeah. You got her the environment was right. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. Yep. Uh, but then I poo-pooed all over the environment and told her we were going to do it. Um, and, you know, she was initially going, you can't, you can't even tell me that right now. You can't even... You, you got to give me a few days to even think about this, and and I start my argument as to why, and she's like, just shut up. I, you know, you're not you're not going to convince me right now. And she was a little bit feisty at that point, but that's my wife, and I just said, all right, I'll I'll, I'll sit back, I'll let her I'll let her think on it a little bit, and then you know, of course, I go home and I start the registration process already on the internet, <laughs> yeah, getting everything. Exactly. Like, you know, I, I bought the insurance policy for Leadville just in case she won the argument, but, right? But uh, and that that was that was the process. That's so. If, speak, you know, the process and being in the Grand Slam. So you're the 282nd person. Yeah, individual to so officially com- let's, complete. Yeah, let's it. back up and talk about what actually entails the Slam. Okay, so basically, you start with Western States, which you got into. Yep. yep. So that's that's the key to right. the whole piece. Yep. Next up, you have to travel east to Vermont. Vermont. To do the Vermont 100. <laughs> Out to the humidity. And then you got Leadville 100. Yeah, and then you wrap it up with uh, Wasatch 100. So what's the what's the time span on that? This year it was 11 Saturdays, start to finish. Right. Wow. Um, depending on the year, it's usually 10 or 11. Okay. This year we got one extra week in between Vermont and Leadville. Okay. Well, that's a little a bonus week. Yeah. Good was, year to do it, it right? Yeah, it was Good nice. year to do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're the 18th person from Utah to do it. Yep. Right. Um, I mean, just. 
I don't know if it's got time to sink in because you say you're new to it, but you know, I know you're like social media and everything. You had a great race report even after Wasatch, but I mean, has it sunk in a little bit? I mean, um, like what you just did? I don't think it has because I was even looking back today and I just looked at like looked at my wife's post on her social media account. And just thought that's pretty cool. Like it, it yeah. still doesn't really hit you. And I and I even had a moment where I like I I don't think I'll appreciate this even until maybe you get to those spots where you can't even finish one anymore. And then right. I think. So I think it's something that it will will sink in through the years. It'll mean something different probably every five years. So now, did you? Because there was how many people started off in the thirty seven this year, I believe, and how many? Maybe thirty nine. How many? Completed? It was under forty. Nineteen. Nineteen, 19 finished. Yeah. Wow. So did you get to know these people? I mean, kind of is it you, like a nice little niche community this yeah, year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great community. They've got a good Facebook page where even previous slammers are great at, at encouraging everyone, giving people pieces of advice. Uh, Jeff Stowell locally here from Utah is great. He's he was super involved and um, got to see him several times and was was sending messages and and suggestions and whatnot. But the group itself, I would say at Western. Um, I was in a, a kind of a panic mode going into Western. Um, I, I, I got a great osteopath in December when I drew out. I worked through the hip issue, did a lot of, a lot of rehab, kind of knew that my hip was in a good spot after I raced a, a half Ironman in April in California. That was really my first test, my first like five hours on my hip trying you know, to exercise for that period of time. I got done with that without any pain. I thought, all right, I'm going to be good. So I trained, I worked hard, I hit the mountains, started running a lot. Um, and then 10 days before it, I made probably the dumbest runner mistake ever. I would listen to the you know podcast with Jeff Browning talking about his double and how he tweaked a calf doing something he would never tell anyone to do. <laughs> right. And I did the same thing. I, I did something that you know is, is a total no-brainer. Um, we were helping uh, Jendelin take scout out some of the Millwood course right. and leave some flags. And uh, we had gone up, I think, over like Kessler and come down. And then we ended up in the creek um, in Cottonwood Canyon there and crossing it. And my legs, after coming on a long downhill, got really, really cold. We were in the water there and it was freezing. Right. And we got out to the road and we saw the car and something went off in my head of, I'm going to sprint to the car. Well, there you go. Just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I sprinted to the car. And about, like, 10 strides in, I felt my hamstring pull up. Oh, and I thought, no. Oh, my gosh. No, 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 no. And I limp and I hobble in. And I didn't even tell my wife. I got in the car, and I was so mad at myself. And we started driving, and I could feel this thing. And it started to get angry. Yeah. And um, this is 10 days before Western States. Right. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, what did you do? And so that was on a Wednesday. On Friday, I went and tried to jog uh, literally right here on the Shoreline Trail. Made it a mile, turned around, couldn't run. Oh, nice. Um, just killing me. So I went to my osteopath again, so I thought maybe she could help me out. She did a lot of work and adjustment on it. Um, woke up Monday, week of, race day, you know, week, race week. I was getting ready to leave on Thursday morning to California, and I called my sports med doc, and I just said, hey, I got to come in. We got to do something. Right. And uh, he put um, ultrasound on it and said, hey, look, it looks like, um, I wish it was like a muscle tear, but it looks like it's the top of the tendon where it inserts Ooh, no, into no, your muscle, no, no. into your bone, clear yeah. up the top. And he's right. like, it's, it's probably a crappy injury for a runner. Right. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> normally, I don't know how bad it is, but if it was minor, I would tell you, you need 12 weeks without running, and right. I know what your next 12 weeks look like. Yeah. And it involves a lot of running, and I know you because he saw me try to do, and uh, I did it, I finished it, but finished an Ironman uh, after a knee surgery and um, just do a lot of stupid things. So he said, <laughs> I, I know what you're going to try to do. So uh, I would, r my advice, smart medicine, is um, let's get an MRI, see how bad it is. You can evaluate whether or not you even want to start this thing. And, right. and I called my wife, and she said, we know you. Uh, it doesn't matter what that MRI looks like. You're going to try it. Right. You're going to start. And I said, yeah, I guess you're right. So let's go the cortisone way and bent over and took a shot. Mm. Ooh, wow. That's um, a sense of very good shot. It is, yeah. Like I was <laughs> right up underneath the sit bone. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, right under the sit bone. Yeah. And and, uh, and and when they tell you, they say right, we're going to be right next to the sciatic nerve. And if we hit the sciatic nerve, it's going to hurt a lot. Exactly. So just let me know. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure you'll, <laughs> you'll figure yeah. it out when I donkey exactly. kick it. So <laughs> even <laughs> even when they don't hit the sciatic nerve, it hurts. Right. Exactly. And so I feel this pain, and I'm like, ah, it's sciatic. No, you know, just what was that? And <laughs> Anyway, so he he got he got me the shot, and you know I don't know if have you ever had a cortisone shot? Yeah. So you get the flare after, right? And the flare was pretty bad. Like Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, was probably even worse. And then driving out there Thursday, mm. I so literally nine. I was hooked up to an ice machine. I, I had a portable ice machine with an inverter in my car, and I was hooked up to it 
for all day Thursday. Right. Just pumping the ice through there and uh, waiting on that thing. And we went and we stayed in Reno the first night, and I got in a hotel and I had ice on it just nonstop. And, and I, I hadn't ran, you know, since that 10 day. I had no idea really what to expect. So, like I said, going into Western States, getting back to the story and the reason you asked the question in the first place, I'm the master of tangents here. No, that was a good okay. one, though. If you're no, going to give good. one, let's do the cortisone shot yeah. in the hiney, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I go there and, and I didn't know what to expect. I really didn't. Um, I remember. We moving from Reno up to um, the Tahoe area. Friday we went to uh, the place that was closer to the, to the start of the race, so I could get registered and everything. I was unloading my stuff, and even bending over, things hurt. Like I could feel my hamstring just bending over to pick up a bag to do you know, anything I was doing to tie my shoes. Um, so Western, I really didn't like go to any of the pre-race stuff uh, very much. I went and I got my bib, obviously. I was right behind uh, Sage Canada, actually. He walked right. up in front of me, and I asked Sage if he wanted to take my number and run it for me and put my time in there. And you know, <laughs> but uh, he didn't he, know who he was he, with. He probably yeah, asked you to sign something. If he would have known right? it was back half Barlow, I think it would have uh, been a little different story. But he took his own. Um, yeah, so went there, got it done, saw a couple people that I had recognized just from pictures um, of who was in the slam because I'm weird and I stalk everyone, and I and I knew it's okay. like we hey, got that problem. Look too. who you're yeah. looking at right now. We're <laughs> yeah. a couple of the pros. We'll give you some tips. That's <laughs> how good we are. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. I mean, like even like Jad Martinez. Like I, I went through the whole slam and I looked at everyone's ultra sign up. I'm like, okay, this Jad guy is gonna kill everyone. Like he's right. he's uh, he's the real deal. He's gonna run, and then and then there will be three or four of us that are gonna be close to each other, and then you know that's just kind of who I am, but. So I, I recognized a couple of faces, but didn't really talk to too many people. Um, was kind of really dealing with things in my own head of how's this going to go? Did I ruin my whole experience? And, right. And just kind of crossing my fingers and hoping. So, so race one, no, you didn't really get to know too many people. Uh, at the finish, got to meet a handful of them. Um, one guy I ran with, Sean Bowman, during Western. We we kind of synced up pretty quickly, and we ran probably thirty miles together. And he and I would end up running like the first 30, 40 of almost every race in the slam together. And inevitably, he would pull away around 30 when things would start to get crappy for me. Uh, and then uh, I would pull my back half stuff, and I'd end up passing him somewhere around mile 80. Right. <laughs> and then we'd laugh about it uh, the next day at the finish. So That's awesome. Yeah. So And you, and with Western, you did that in 23, 26. So you went sub 24. Yep. Yeah, somehow. So, I mean, overall, I mean, just a quick, did the, I mean, the race, considering what you went in feeling like, did the race go, I mean, you felt good through the race? I mean, yeah, it was, for it the was, most part? It was a cool experience. It really was because I, I didn't know what to expect. And I start running. And right off the bat, they, sh they send you up the escarpment. It's nothing like Bear Canyon, but yeah. right. but it's a steep start for a 100-miler. Right. And you get up to kind of the last little pitch there, and it's it's uh, pretty much, it's steep. I don't know what the grade is, maybe 35%. Wow. And I remember getting up, because it's a runnable road for a long time. And, and early on, I found, holy crap, this is better for me if I take these little jab steps and jog up. Right. So I was moving faster up it than I wanted to, than I had planned to, yeah. and than I thought I would. But it was more painful on my hamstring to take a long stride and power hike. Right. It was easier to just keep a cadence, plug away, get up there. And then you got to the last spot, and I knew I couldn't even jog up that. I had to do these, like, long steps. And I remember, like, literally looking at the sky, like, oh, please, Heavenly Father, make this not hurt. Because <laughs> you're a whole solid, yeah. what, mile, two miles yeah, into the race? Yeah, right. two miles in, and you're like, this is going to determine everything right here. Here we go. And I remember putting those foot steps forward. And, and I, I remember, like, stopping and turning to a guy behind me. I'm like, I'm going to go really slow, so I apologize. Go ahead, pass me, push me, whatever right. you need to do. And I'm just taking these, you know, one step at a time. And... Before I knew it, I was at the top, and I thought, holy crap, that was awesome. And I look over, and I see Sally McRae, who I admire a lot. I've had a chance to right. run a couple times with her. And she just starts ripping down the hills. I'm like, this is fun. I'm going. So <laughs> yeah. we just took off. And I was running on her hills for like seven miles and had a lot of fun. And then she was pushing harder than I wanted to, finally. And I thought, that was good enough. That was fun. Right. Seven miles, and now let's calm down. and <laughs> Settle uh, back into yeah, where I need to be. Yeah, let's, let's make it through the first 30 and see yep. where we're at. That's awesome. So you finished that one. You came through unscathed for the most part. For the right. most part, unscathed. Yeah, the big the big thing for me at that one was um, that heat really got me, and I threw up for the first time ever in an endurance event. Mile thirty one, I just hit the dirt and I was puking. Was that from and the heat? Or? Yeah, I think it was the heat. You know, and and probably taking in like really sugary foods mixed right. with the heat. My stomach was like, nope. So how did discharged. you how did you deal with the heat then? Um, I kept myself wet the whole time. Right. I, I wore sun sleeves and white tights, which yep. a lot of people always make fun of Tommy for his white tights, but I keep them wet yeah. all the time. I'm just constantly sponging them, throwing ice in them, keeping right. it by your femoral artery because the tights will actually trap it there. Right. Um, and that's that was my strategy. And and then I wore my America hat throughout the whole thing. And Saw I that. Kept throwing ice in that sucker. There you go. Um, it was really good because it was super stretchy and spongy, so yeah. it, it would keep water and ice, and I would keep it right on my forehead. Yeah. 
and that that tended to you know help a lot but but surviving that first like puke session in the heat i was in a really bad spot but once uh, i hit the next aid station i saw a dude eric johnson who ended up being my pacer here at wasatch right really really good guy and he was just like you know what just get through the heat and canis was great too yeah you guys interviewed canis he walked with me for a moment and he just said tommy i know you've been through a heat before in the past but you're probably underestimating this like chill a little bit you know let your body cool down and, and deal with it and and uh you know a couple of good people to give me some words of encouragement a couple of racers sprayed me i i, I think it looked pretty bad because people are looking at me like this guy this guy is in trouble <laughs> he's, cooked, he's, right? he's yeah, the guy he's, in the white yeah, tights yeah. yeah this guy went out way too fast he's done yeah when you got to the river did you spend some time in the river did that um, help i did not i was um it was funny i i was impatient i don't know like i, I probably looking back i should have enjoyed it more right but um i had my my pacer had had a couple spills earlier. Yeah. And so I was by myself. I had flown down that mountain. I was feeling really good. And I got to the river and I wanted to, to pass. And I went like around someone and then I got yelled at. They're like, no, you have to have your hands on the rope. So then right. I'm like, oh, come on, guys. Well, that's Wamsley's so, fault, you know. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was. He blew it for all of us. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I should have, that's one like regret that I have. I thought I should have like paused and enjoyed it because the only memory I have of the river is getting to it feeling a little bit agitated and annoyed that people are going too slow. <laughs> and then I remember the cool hitting um, the chafed areas of my nether regions and oh. feeling like, ooh, yeah, no, I'm chafing. This well, is, see, this that's is, that's the question I was going to ask. So I'm glad you, so you're <laughs> dropping ice down your tights. So, yeah. we, I mean, it's just part of it. How do you deal with the chafing when you're dropping ice down there? Yeah, I mean, it's going to happen. Uh, I don't like that answer. I don't, <laughs> yeah. I, you know it, and that's not an area you want to build up like a big old <laughs> callus, right? right? Check those yeah. thighs out, baby. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I've got this bad visual right now that I'm not going to be able to get out of my head for a couple of days. <laughs> We're taking your uh, podcast down a road. Oh, it, it, trust me, this is tame. This is compared. nothing. We've yeah. gone down too many roads. Yeah, yeah no. So it, it, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm a big aquifer fan. I used a lot of that, and uh, you know, often. I guess right. it's, all, it's all you can do, and just know that it's going to happen at some point. But right. Until you get to Vermont, but that's another story. Yeah, what, what you're about to get to. So, so you finished Western. How long till Vermont? Was it two weeks? Three, Three. Three weeks. Yeah. What was the recovery like then? What did you do to get yourself ready for the Vermont experience? So um, I had read a lot of Ian Sharman stuff. Right. And his advice was, you're not going to do a lot of running in between. Right. You're right. going to basically hike, yep. get those legs strong, do some runs, but you know, probably like 12 miles might be your longest run. Well, yeah. And so uh, when I finished Western, I, my IT band was bugging me. Like, I, did, I didn't feel anything during the race. But your hamstring at that point. And the hamstring, yeah, the funny thing was, um, like, I strained, like, the lower muscles of the hamstring, probably right. trying to protect that insertion point up high. Yep. Um, they were a little bit sore, but they didn't bother me too much. And I think it was more just, like, mechanically, you probably made some adjustments, <clears throat> and those adjustments probably affected my IT bands a little bit. Right. And so um, I, I really struggled. I think... I'd have to go back and look. I wrote it down somewhere, but I think it was literally like in the high 20s as far as mileage total that I got in between Western and Vermont. Is that for the week? Uh, for the whole three-week period. Oh. I just, it was it was rough. Like, I, I tried to go out. I, I went on a hike um, like five days out. I went up Alta Brighton. Right. And kind of jogged up the hill with some people and ended up hiking a lot. And it was like seven miles total. And I was in so much pain coming back down. I couldn't get down the mountain. Like, like was, hamstring pain? No, IT, IT pain? IT pain, Okay. Yeah. I right. just felt like someone was taking ice pick to the side of my knees. Yeah. And then I thought, well, I, I probably tried too soon. So right. I gave myself several days. And I don't think I tried to run again until like five days later. Right. I went to Mueller and just, you know, eight miles there. Right. Felt okay on the way up, on the way down, still feeling IT band. Thought, okay, right. I need to back off. Need to get so were time. you doing any, you know, like body work, seeing your your, your doctor during yeah. that, that three-week interval between uh, the races? I did. I made it a point that, like, every – I had a set standing appointment with my osteopath. Um, right. And she's really tough to get into, so I, like, booked it out. I'm like, this is what That's I'm right. doing. you, you got to yeah. do that, right? You, Isn't you that smart to, to it do? It is. You need to save me these spots, and she yeah. was great to do so. You um, got to stay on the books. Yeah, and so she she was able, literally, like, every race to find one or two imbalances that I know right. would have been kind of a deal breaker for me. Yeah. So straighten this or that out. And she worked on the IT and the psoas and, right. you know, some of the other piriformis muscles and, and, and basically just showed me what I needed to be doing as far as some stretches. Right. And, and that's really, like, Western States Vermont was more about fix this IT stuff. Like, you right. can't have this because you got a lot of running to do. Yeah, you do. And pretty much, you know, went into it, got a few runs in. Uh, but even my last run there, it was, again, kind of a confidence killer because I went out just uh, for three miles and to my office from my house along, like, the Shoreline Trail. 
and then ran back another three and and just wasn't feeling good. Right. Wasn't feeling myself, could feel this IT stuff. So I just thought, I'm going to rest again. And I shut it down and didn't really do anything other than maybe like a mile or two miles the day before a race. Okay. So, so you go into Western, or you go into um, Vermont at that point. So you, you get there. What's the difference between Vermont and Western? I mean, obviously the train's different, but is there is there a big difference between the feel of the races? Yeah, yeah, big big difference feel. Number one, you have horses, <laughs> <laughs> so you're running and uh, you'll have these horse riders come up alongside you and and trot along with you, and the horse kind of wants to go your pace, right? Um, and then so the riders kind of spawning them on, uh, trying to push them ahead of you at times. But it was interesting because they require longer breaks. Um, so at the end of the day, I literally ran 85 miles with the same horse and rider until they got to the very end where they just let them go. And they, and right. she told me that, like, I kept seeing them, they would, they would pass me and then they, it, it spots the course takes off to a different area where they had a, uh, basically like a feed zone for the horses and right. a mandatory cool down where they'd get them wet. So you'd be running, they'd come past you. And then 10 miles later, they pass you again. You're like, man, I, I didn't ever see you guys, but because right. they were stopping and yeah. resting their horse some more. But yeah, back and forth with this uh, one white white pony that had uh, some blue faux hawk action going on. <laughs> nice. And, going and, with uh, your America shirt. Yeah. 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 So we had fun and got to <laughs> chat with them, talk to them about their horses and how they train them. But that was the one of the bigger differences. And then the second was Vermont is roads. I don't care what anyone tells me. Like, that. like, like service road, like yeah. towpath type Just, of. So it's a lot of private property right you don't you don't get to know what the course is right they don't publish a map if you, you just have to stock strava and kind of see where really? people ran okay um, because there's so much private land and they don't want people out pre-running the course yeah i could see that and the roads um really felt and looked to me like at one point they probably even had asphalt or pavement on them oh, and no. then and then they've just kind of um you know put a light layer of dirt over the top of them right but they're packed to the point that i mean i know people out there kind of off the grid there have to be like people with horse and buggies because they were smooth enough that a horse and buggy could just roll along those. Sections. Right. And, okay. And and so that really beats your legs up, man. Well, that, yeah, because it's runnable, right? It's all yeah. It's, it's just rolling hills consistently. Yeah. There's a few. I, I it really felt. I mean, Eric Nelson, another Utah guy who was out there with me and ran it. He and I both talked, and we felt like it was like 90 miles of road and 10 miles of trail. Oh. Uh. Ack. Yeah, it depends on your, you know what you like, but yeah. man, I do not like road running, and I thought, how did I get myself into a 100-mile road race? But <laughs> you had to do it. It's part of the slam. Yep. All yep. right, so what was your finish time on that? Do you remember uh, 20, 22.15. All right, and so how'd you feel after that? That one um, was mentally the hardest part of the slam for me. Um, because there was so much running, or no, what No, um, I, I had... I, I don't know, man. I, I always struggle from mile 30 to 60 in a 100 miler. Okay. It's my death point. Right. I usually run out in front of people. All of a sudden, people start reeling me back in. Yeah. Um, you get, I have get a really a crappy about moment. That? And then, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I learned to be patient. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I've learned actually, I think I did a really good job throughout the entire slam of saying, it's okay. This is the section where everyone passes you always. Right. You suck right now. You'll be fine later. Yeah. Back half's coming. That's right. <laughs> you'll, you'll get over it. Yeah. And and eventually you'll reel people in, and I learned to kind of believe in that that it, the things would turn around. So it was okay. Um, it was a little bit embarrassing because there were people that I thought were a lot older than me and shouldn't be with me at that point. But it happened, and it whatever. does happen. You, know, right? you let it go. Yeah, you do. So um, I, I was making my comeback, and I was feeling really good and really strong. And um, like so, Eric, who was out there um, at one point, I think it gapped me by like almost an hour. And then by mile 72, I had pulled it to within like five minutes. Ken's is like, he just left the aid station, so you'll be catching up to him soon. And 72 to 76 is a pretty tough section of the course by Vermont standards. There's a decent amount of climbing. And I started going up a hill, and at mile 74, I pulled over to the bathroom, and I had blood in my urine. Uh -oh. Like, blood, blood, blood. It wasn't like, like it had gone orange or anything. Like that. It was just straight blood yeah. on a fern. And I right. thought, oh, man, this is not good. So mentally, it was really tough for me because I had a mini panic attack. I thought, do I oh, have yeah. rhabdo? Am, yeah. I, you know, am I putting myself at risk? Um, what should I do? My patient was really great just talking me down and mm -hmm. basically convinced me, like, look, you just need to stop running and start drinking. And right. you need to drink until you pee. And, and we did that basically. <laughs> You know, picked up my wife a little bit later. She she was great. She paced me at the end of every single race. But mm -hmm. I told her, I'm like, sorry, honey, I'm, I'm not going to be running. We're going to be drinking water and hiking in. So right. for me, it was 24 miles of like this panic attack of, how, you know, are my kidneys going to shut down at any minute? Yeah. Like, I can't really do much other than drink water. And hopefully, the, and, the, and you know, I, I was really good at paying attention. I feel like I, I don't think I crossed the line of doing something uber stupid. Right. Because I was 
just listening to my body and mm-hmm. waiting for the kidneys to even feel like a cramp or a ping or anything. Right. It never came. I kept drinking. I kept flushing. So the blood never went away until I stopped. But right. But it was it was mentally tough. I, that was the one spot where I thought I, this might be done. Like the slam might be over. Sure. So. That that had been scary. Yeah. For sure. Well, well and you pulled through that in twenty two fifteen. Yeah. Right? Twenty two fifteen. Yeah. So when you went into it, like say the first race, second race, did you have time goals for each race or just an overall? I thought I read somewhere where you, yeah, like, you overall, had 100 hours. Like, in the back of my head, I thought, God, that would be sneaky cool if I could figure out how to get this thing done in under 100 hours. Yeah. And I thought, you know, it, it, to me, for, again, being a new guy, I mean, I, ran, I had ran Bear. Bear, for me, I thought, I'm going to go into this thing. I'm going to see what it does. I don't want any expectations. And I had planned a 27-hour Bear. And right. all of a sudden, like, I was on pace for sub-24 until my hip went crap at mile 75. And then ended up a little over 24 at bear. Right. So I knew I had some ability, um, but again, hamstring, all that stuff. I was shocked when I came in under 24 at Western. Right. Going into Vermont, I thought, man, my legs suck. I've got this IT problem. So when I did my splits for my team, um, I I gave them splits from a 21-hour finish all the way to a 26-hour finish. Right. It was a huge window. There was yeah. a lot of unknown. And told them, you know, hey, by like 50 or 60 in, we'll know where we're at. Right. Um, when, when I started limping and or having the blood and started having to hike in, I knew I was well ahead of a sub-24. Mm-hmm. And so didn't really care. Right. Just shut it down and just said, you know, we're going to get it done. Yeah. So. And then you had a little bit of time between Vermont and Leadville. Yeah, five weeks was wow. was awesome. Yeah, so what did you do during that five-week period? Um, my body started to respond, I think, to stressors and getting better at, at recovering. Um, I gave myself a little bit more time. I didn't try to run like at the five day mark. I waited for a full week. Right. And uh, like I think it was eight days out. We went up to Upper Big Water and ran up there um, right. with some guys, uh, Steve Nelson or Steve Newman and uh, Benj Becker. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were both training for Wasatch and and put in a lot of work. Were good runners. And I was able to hang with them for eleven miles, and I felt pretty good about that. Yeah. And uh, body was feeling good. Um, IT only bothered me for like for the first two miles on the downhill and then it went away. Right. And Were I you really still getting some, felt it again. some body work at that point? Yep. Yeah. yeah so back, right back to <laughs> Autumn. Right. Maybe my the osteopath, you know, she put yeah, me Yeah, give her a together. shout out. Yeah. 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 Autumn is incredible. So, so, so who is it? So officially, who is this person? So she's, she, I, I, Autumn, Autumn what? Autumn Mayberry. Where is she at? And she's in Harriman and it's Rose Canyon Manual Therapy. All right. And I got turned on to her by a triathlete buddy of mine who, saw you know my woeful post on instagram of dude i'm like my hip sucks i just got right. found out i've got fai hip torn labrum i'm in trouble and he oh. says hey you know what i had the same diagnosis and i was told surgery yeah. is my option and i went and i found this osteopath and in two treatments she had me running right he's on. like you gotta go see her so yeah. drove you know the hour to harriman yeah and saw her twice and was back to running and right on. Uh, it was unreal it you know it was just a a muscle imbalance, my, my, the way she explained it, basically, I'd done some damage to the labrum, but yeah. my muscles were splinting and holding it in that spot and not allowing it to release and get back to where it should be. Right. And so then you don't have blood flow, so things don't heal, and, and that's what she's good at. Just uh, that, That's awesome. That structural alignment, really, through muscles. And and so, yeah, every every race, she puts me back together. So, um, Leadville, same thing. Saw her. Um, got a chance, actually, with Brandon Wicks, who was another Utah that was going for the slam. Yeah. Um, he uh, messaged me and said, hey, would you like to go stay at my parents' house in Edwards, Colorado? We can get out on the course. And, right. And was lucky uh-huh. enough to take him up on that. Uh, so the two of us went out, and we just hit the hardest part of the course. So right. we did Twin Lakes out to almost Winfield. We, we turned around a little bit before Winfield where the climbing stops. Right. And then back up and over. And for me, like mentally, that was awesome. It's huge to get to be there on hope and understand what it is and, right. and how bad you're going to feel and, and how the altitude is going to affect you and how steep that backside is coming back when you're coming inbound. Okay. Um, so good opportunity to get there. I think that was really crucial to race day. And so, you know, anyone who's going to do Leadville, I think you got to go do Hope Pass at least once before the race. So you mentally. know what it's about yeah. a little yeah. bit. Right. Know how you're going to respond to that altitude, yep. huh? Yeah. And you can kind of put together a mental strategy, like pick a couple spots, you know, right. mentally where you're like, okay there's a tiny reprieve as small as it is it's a reprieve and it's right here and yeah. i'm going to bask in that for a second so. <laughs> that's awesome yeah. so at that point so going in the level you've had a chance to run three very iconic 100s so what is the atmosphere like at uh leadville compared to western states yeah it's different um western states feel, felt me to me more like a like a race like right this is a foot race right people yeah. are out here these are the fastest people in the world right and they're going to go for it um it's a course that 
I think really actually suits me well. I think that's the only other reason I was able to go sub 24 is because I'm I'm a good downhill runner. Everyone says that they're good downhills, right? <laughs> it's kind of stupid to say, but but it's what my body actually really responds well to. I can recover at a, at a good pace going okay. downhill. My quads were ready for the pounding. Like I I never felt like they were blown out. Right. Where other r- runners later in the race really struggled, and that's where I made up all the time was flying down those hills in yeah. the last 25 miles. Um, well, I just say last. The 25 miles before the last 10 that are uphill. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, and that's my thing. And so, um, anyway, so Western really felt like a foot race. Right. And there are spots where you can open up and just fly. Uh, Leadville, the atmosphere feels like you're going there to see who's tough enough to survive, is what and it And is like that because me. of the altitude? Uh, it is, yeah. I think it's the altitude. And I think it's because um, when you look at the race and you see it, Again, not having a ton of trail running experience myself, my knowledge around Leadville came from reading the book Born to Run. Right. And it makes it seem like it's the most impossible thing in the world, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you didn't have your sandals on. <laughs> <laughs> I should have, right. There was, some, there was a girl with her sandals on at mile 50. I don't know what happened to her after that, but I was uh, really she impressed that she toe. was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. She put shoes on and finished. But, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. But, uh, you know, so that you, you see that. And then and then I'm a big race report reader. It's how I, I like to mentally run the race about 80 different ways and 80 different times before I do any of them. Right. And I do that through people's race reports. And it was intimidating. Like, this is the first time where I had more than half of them are DNFs, right? And right. I found a couple of people that had DNF five times and hadn't finished the dumb thing. Wow. And so, and then they looked to me like ultra sign up stuff. Like these aren't just schleps, you know, they aren't right. people who just walked off the street. These guys have uh, done a hundred milers and, yeah. and they, they, they couldn't the get it twice. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, going into it, it was like, man, this thing is legit. I had a really healthy level of respect for the course. Right. I had looked at previous Western or Grand Slammers, and I took their times, and I would say, hey, this guy's about my level. He ran Western about the same time that I did and Vermont about the same time, maybe a little bit faster even. Right. So at Leadville, man, like, looking at that, I I should be finishing probably in 27, 26 hours, somewhere right. in that range. And when did you end up finishing that at? I got in at uh, 23, 40. 39 on my finisher jacket and 40 officially on ultra sign-up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know which one to believe. You'll take that, that minute I'm difference. 23, 39 is what we're going with. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which was which was awesome. I, yeah. uh, that was uh, probably one of the highlights of the slam, to feel good all day on a course like that. Really? And feel untouched by the altitude and oh, to man, feel awesome. like nutrition was on. Your like stomach was on? Stomach was on, everything. I, I didn't. I, I just I felt like that was uh, beginner's the, luck. Was. I know beginner's you're making luck, a lot of non-friends. I, know, I, I know, see right? your social media friends <laughs> dropping right now. I know, all right? Leaving. You're gonna go home. It's like how'd they unfriend me? <laughs> they don't I, like me. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, yeah, because like I hear so many bad things about Leadville, and I loved Leadville. It was so cool. And, and the experience, the people. I mean, the the pre-race meeting is awesome. Other yeah. pre-race meetings, no comment. This one was <laughs> was incredible. <laughs> you know? it was I love it. The comment, no comment. Yeah, yeah right. it was. It was. Um, you know, Ken gets up there and he does his thing, and it's yeah. just you know, hey, you're better than you think you are. Right. You can do more than you think you can. Like this is a place where we don't even know how to spell quit. Does uh, does quitting have two T's or one? We don't know because you're not going to quit. Everyone right. stand up and commit. You're not going to quit. Yeah. And and you know, I love his philosophy. Just that this is, this race isn't about necessarily the elites. Like I don't care. Like some guy can call me up and tell me he wants in the race. If he didn't get in the race, he's not getting in the race. Right. I don't care who you are. Uh, this race is really about getting the average guy off the road, who's you know wants to go back and do something in the corporate world or in his family or or somewhere else, and he wants to take the lesson that he learned here right. and be a better person for it. And I and I really believe Ken's all about that. That's awesome. You know, to hear. So I love that you felt it. You felt it there. You felt it in the town when you were walking around. People recognize you as a really skinny, emaciated runner. Right. And I go, yeah, we know what you're here for. Good luck. Dude. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome what you're they doing. They just point at me and go, yeah, the pastry shop's two <laughs> blocks down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so they they were great, and 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 you just felt that that like the whole town is there to support you, and and the the, the racers on the course. I like the out and back. I mean, there's some Do people you? that would drive them nuts, but I thought it was cool. I thought it was yeah. really cool to get up to the top and see the you know see Max King coming over, and then did he look rough? Oh, he looked rough. He looked, <laughs> he looked rough. I was like, and and people are whispering, he's he's on pace for a course record. Yeah, and he was, like, was, and and I'm like in my head, I'm like, he looked awful. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> You're just you looking at your watch, and you're like, okay, in about 10 minutes, yeah, he's you, going to 
just crashed. And I mean, no discredit to him because I love dudes that are going for it. Oh, he yeah. was going for it. He I mean, was, was going for yeah, it. Yeah, he had. I mean, it was Eye of the Tiger. He was working. His pacer was struggling. Like his pacer Heck looked yeah. like, like, what the freak are we doing, man? <laughs> yeah. He was he was having a hard time. But and then and then the you know the interesting thing was twenty minutes later you see Ian Sharman. You know, I'm I'm kind of coming down and he's coming up and Ian's smiling. You yeah. Know, it's just like a, he's been there before. Was, he knows. Yeah. yeah he he's smart. That was gonna go. Yeah. So you, all right. So you finished Leadville. How are you feeling at that point? Body? Honestly, like, untouchable. <laughs> like, really? I felt like... Physically, like, mentally, oh, yeah, you're I was, like... I was like, dude, I just... You're on point, huh? Yeah, well, I felt like I, like I just got over the biggest obstacle, the one that, like, statistically takes everyone out. And we right. had 11 drop from the slam. Yeah. And we had 10 who made it in the last hour. Right. Wow. So that was 21 right there. people right there of, you know, the 39, or I don't even remember how many I had going into it, 30-some-odd that were left. I think we lost four or six at Western States. Right. So so we had 30 at Leadville, okay. and then 11 dropped, and so we were down to 19, but we were close to being down to eight. Right. You know, it was it was, wow. it was just a tough day. And th- that cutoff, I think the one that does it is that cutoff at mile 45. Yeah. Um, you, you, and they got a 30-hour cutoff at Leadville, right? A 30-hour cutoff, but, man, you got to be fast. you got to be to mile 45 in 12 hours. Wow. Or 12 and a half hours. Yeah, that'll get half. some people, right? That'll get yeah, a lot of so, people. Yeah, and so you read, and I agree with it, like one of the – guys that uh, wrote like how to finish Leadville his his suggestion was you have to run 40 miles yeah. in order to finish there's 40 miles that you have to be running yeah and if you want to go sub 25 you got to run 70 miles yeah so pick your miles and where you are the right at the start you got to run that that first 13 to make clean yeah. you got to move right so I had a two-hour split goal for the first 13 miles yeah. of a 100 mile or on a trail like wow. that's stupid right at 10,000 feet yeah you guys start off in the dark too yeah so that's even harder yeah so i think for a lot of people it's a really difficult race to finish because you got to move fast and you got to yeah. get to that point but at the, at the other side the coin is that cut off at 45 it really thins the herd so right oncoming traffic coming back through probably makes the race more enjoyable for the rest of us but yeah but uh-huh. So you had but I, I was bulletproof, man. After that, I finished that. I thought, yeah, this is great. Like physically, and mentally, you're you're, and you're it, good. It was beyond my wildest dreams that I would finish that thing, like sub twenty five, and then even sub twenty four. I was just like, this is this awesome. is nuts. Like I'm, so, I'm feeling great. So you finished. And so what is the the time frame then between Leadville and Wasatch? Three right? weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. So that that was the only thing in my head. I was like, I know what running three weeks after Western felt like. I, I got a pretty good idea what running three weeks after Leadville and, and not doing it at Vermont, doing right. it at Wasatch. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. Wasatch is a head. completely different <laughs> That's beast. a different ball game. So yeah. how, your body's feeling good. You're, you're back. You're seeing your your gal, Autumn. Yep. She's fixing you up. She's fixing are me you, up. How much are you running at that point in, in that three-week uh, window? In this one, um, I ran probably about, I bet I ran 40 miles. During that course yep. of three weeks. Yep. Right. I mean, there's really no need to. Yeah. Run a whole bunch, and, and I thought that was great because I had struggled to get you know near that before, yeah. and and the runs felt really good. Like okay. I, I was almost like, wow, I shouldn't feel this good. Like yeah, I, I body was feeling really strong. Mm-hmm. Hip never bothered me the whole year, right. which was Hamstring? just a huge relief. Hamstring was still there, but it's I came to this thought that my hamstring stopped me from trying to run uphill too hard, right, and probably did me a service in the 100 miler at the end of Absolutely, the day. Absolutely, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, it probably kept me honest is yeah. really what it did. So, you know, you don't need to sprint. If if I was, you know, trying to run a 5K, the hamstring would have been an issue. Sure 100 yeah. miler, at no. the end of the day, I don't think it really did much. Right. So you get to Wasatch. The morning of the race, how are you feeling at that point? That that was uh, the biggest nerve ball I've ever been. Really? Yeah, standing right here. I say you're, we're, we're back, sign. right? Yeah, we're I mean, here. <laughs> I feel a lot better today being here than okay, I did Okay, so the PTSD's so, calming down oh, a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're a bundle of nerves. You guys go off, and you've got this first climb that's new, and it's hard. How are you feeling at that point? Well, the the last time that I did Bear Canyon, it was 93 degrees right. in the heat, and I was I hated it. I got to the top, and I laid down in some shade of a weed. Right. <laughs> on the dirt. <laughs> and I thought, please protect me from the sun. <laughs> and I pulled out a bottle and it was hot. And I just was like, this sucks. And, uh, you know, I, I just thought, if I can feel better than that, I'll be okay. Right. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I mean, I, I put myself, I think, in a good spot. I ran a little fast down the hill, but I can do that. I know my body. I, I know the downhill doesn't affect me very much. Right. So I got myself probably in like 
25 to 30 position somewhere in there right to hit the trailhead and, and moving up the trailhead is with jad uh, who'd done the slam with me he's the fastest dude there and and he and i just stuck together and we we hiked that sucker and we didn't have to deal with a lot of dust conga lines like yeah i didn't have to deal with anything i stopped once just to uh, let a, two people buy to throw some calories in because I, I wanted to execute this nutrition plan that worked for me at Leadville at uh-huh. Wasatch. So made sure I got the calories in right. and, and uh, got to the top. And I, you know, I felt good. I really did at the top. I felt tired, which right. I expected to feel fatigued. Um, and, and, and the cumulative effect of the slam was a real thing. Right. I, sleeping patterns were tough. Um, the other thing I should say, if it wasn't for like Elizabeth Inpine who put together a nutritional plan for me, mm-hmm. I think I would have been a lot worse shape too. Because okay. she helped me with like nutrients and getting my body where I felt like I had at least enough energy to get this right. Thing done. Maybe we can circle Move. back to that and touch on yeah. that after we talk about Wasatch. So, you, you get up bare, you get to the top, and you're running down because it's a long downhill. Yeah, it's a long downhill, and everyone warns you, you know, don't blow your quads. But yeah. again, I, I know where where I can take on the course, and and I let it go and right. ran down that thing and. You know, Jad had put some time between us the last little bit of the climb. I ended up catching up to him at Groban's Watershed. I passed probably like three or four dudes on the way down and, right. and was feeling good. Um, and then you kind of get to the spot where it goes a little bit flat to a little bit rollery. Yeah. And that's where I suck. I'm a crappy flat <laughs> runner. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, other people are, you know, at this point catching up to me. Um, mm. Ian Ferris and Justin Anderson, who's a really tough triathlete that I've done a lot with, they come up and they're like, hey, you shouldn't be right here. You shouldn't feel this good because you're in the slam. I'm like, well, I had to take what I what I knew was mine, but right, now I'm going to yeah. be slowing down. So yeah. don't worry about it. Right we'll on. talk to you guys later. But kind of you go into the doldrums of Wasatch through, you know, from there to Big Mountain, I think just sucks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's one or two good spots, and that's yeah. about there's it. There's some, some little grunty of a climbs that really yeah. kick, yeah, there kick are. you in the yeah. good spot, too. And then there's some overgrown trail after sessions, and yeah. that's not fun. Out there by Swallow Rocks is kind of neat. Between sessions and Swallow Rocks, uh, there was yeah. this nasty beehive. Oh. Uh, and I got stung right in the face <laughs> of all places, like right <laughs> below my eye. So Gosh. I was like just big puffy and... And that's when the you know, stomach started to turn. I don't know if it was correlated or if I was just pissed, but I think more than anything, my stomach was because of my nerves. Really? You know, I had, I had thought, gone back and forth like the week of, like, what am I going to do? How hard am I going to try to run this thing? Mm-hmm. And I thought, yeah, you got a chance to be like one of 13 people who've run, uh, you know, what Wasatch under 24 hours. Yeah. You know the course well enough. You got right. maybe a one in chance, ten chance of doing it. Yeah. You know? I'm not the greatest gifted runner out there, but I'm pretty gritty, and I thought, I'm going to go for it. You know, and it's kind of like that moment where maybe you're getting ready to do a bungee jump or something like that, and you feel those <laughs> nerves, and you're like, I'm yeah. going to do this, but I kind of want to puke right now. Yeah. That, and that's kind of where it was. I, I, cu- I could have been smarter, and I could have taken the pressure off myself and said, you know, just run a managed race and run it probably just under 26. Right. Um, like you've done the other ones, but I thought, nah, I'm going to go. Right. You're going to gun for it. Yeah. So, so your stomach starts to fall apart. Yeah. You know, you were pretty honest with that on social media. So was your wife. <laughs> Basically, you're, you're puking your guts out, right? Yeah. At that point. <laughs> Anything I can get in just came right back out. Yeah. So what was that? So what's that? That's the new mileage over there at Sessions, which is, it used to be like 22. So it's. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I hit, I didn't, I started feeling sick at like 31. Right. Um, I didn't actually puke until 39. Okay. okay. When, when so, finally I just couldn't hold it anymore. So from mile 39 to what? To the end. To yeah. The end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just, right. just about 60 miles. All right. So 60 yeah. miles of straight up puking. Yeah. Yeah. How'd that go? That was, man, that was, that was tough. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, I don't, it, like, you really appreciate your body when it does something like that for you. Cause, right. Because uh, there just weren't calories. And it was, you know, I, I kept telling my wife, like, the only thing I could describe it as was, like, this tightrope of, I know I need to put something in me because I'm going to die if I don't. Right. But I don't want to put anything in me because I'm going to puke if I do. Right. And I'm probably going to be in a deficit after I puke. And that's kind of what it felt like. It right. Like I could take a tiniest little piece of a Stroop waffle and I'd put it in my mouth and I'd chew it. And and then we'd go like an hour and a half and, and my pacers, you know, whether it was Eric or Kenzie, were just like, you got to get more. And I'm like, I know. I know. Yeah. I know I got to get more. I know there's everything ahead of us, but I can't. And right. then as soon as we try to force it, boom, just puke. And just then you just dejected you'd be just angry because you look at the ground you thought that's everything that i just worked to get in sure for the last hour and now i'm you know back to you know, either square one or worse right because well, that's such a mental thing because you just said leadville i mean you came away from that like yeah. on fire right? yeah. i mean that was you were you were but zoned I feel like in. i nailed nutrition i thought yeah. i had the same plan I'm like i'm gonna do this yeah and so then you hit wasatch and it doesn't i mean mentally yeah. too i mean not just the the physical part of it but mentally did this 
offset what you were doing at Wasatch? Did you have some concerns in the back of your mind, or did you like, no, I'll walk at the 36 if I have to? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew I wouldn't like ever quit. I, someone, someone messaged me earlier in the week, and they're like, yeah, I was talking to someone, and they were in an aid station, and they were doing the slam, and they quit with, like, you know, some odd miles to go so many years back. And I'm right. like, dude, they would have to scrape me off the rock. Yeah, like, there's right? no way. I'm like, I, there's, I'm not quitting. Yeah. And, and I, you know, Jeff Stowell, I'd mentioned him before. He sent me a message, and he says, Tommy, I, I, I think you should go for sub-24, too. Like, right. you know, I think you're probably strong enough to maybe pull it off. And if not, even if you blow up, man, you can probably get in under 30. You'd still right. have your under 100-hour goal. Because to me, it was, it was like, yeah, either, you know, you... You finish under 30, you get sub-100, which is, the, at the end of the day, the awesomest experience. And if you had a chance to get them all in under 24, like, you'd right. never forget that. So so what was your finish time at Wasatch? 26.44. Nice. Nice job. Considering with all the struggles, that's... I, yeah. I was really happy with it. Because <laughs> there, were, there were spots where Kenzie and I, like, when we started out of Brighton, it was like, okay, we're somehow going to get under 30, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. And then for, for the longest time, it was, okay, it's 28, it's 28. Yeah. And, and then, like... You know, things started to click a little bit for me. I, I think I just got better at um, suffering. Suffering, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, just like maybe, like maybe it was less worry. Right. Where I, I stopped thinking about like I'm gonna die because I can't get enough calories, and mm-hmm. I just started really focusing on just putting that foot in front of the other and mm-hmm. being okay with like, yeah, I'm not probably not gonna eat for two hours. And so the that last thirty miles, were you? What were you, were you able to run the downhills and the flats and just power hike the uphills? Was that kind of what was going the, on? The flats were really hard. Um, I didn't move well on the flats. I actually hiked the uphills really well. Right. Um, I, was, I wasn't struggling. I wasn't getting past. I was, if anything, probably putting time on people wow. that were around me. Um, I did really well uh, from Brighton to Point Supreme. I was surprised. Like on Strava, when Kenzie sent me a text and was like, dude, you did that way faster than i did it and 15 faster than benj did it and we i thought benj did well and i don't right. know how you did that on like no calories so yeah so I, the 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 uphills actually proved to be pretty good for me the downhills always treat me well mm-hmm. the flats were a struggle and there's there is actually quite a bit of flat right yeah, yep, there, there is, is yeah, yeah. Some there's of that there's a lot, lot of that road service and road and yeah. especially right there next to the reservoir and, uh, yeah. and, that, and that's when i tested the patience of my pacers <laughs> and my wife and, and but i just like it was just tough you know, there's not much you can do and you know, again, it was just like, uh, if I move faster, I'm going to jostle more, I'm going to puke right. more. Yeah. Yeah. So you finish. What's that immediate response at that point? Um, like, I think that the, the real flow of emotion and, like, the, the finish to me actually came when we were circling around uh, the reservoir and kind of like that last turn. Right. Like at that point, it just like hit me. Like did holy it? crap, you did it! Like you, you finished the slam. So it was bad. just, it was pretty unreal. Yeah. Um, and that's to me, like from there on in, it was just, it really soaking it all in. I, I remember telling my wife when she did Wasatch a couple years ago. Right. So it was. Uh, I'm gonna turn my phone off. Apologies to you. That's okay. It's, it's his agent calling. That's <laughs> it, it is. It is. Yeah. So they. Uh, I remember talking to my wife, and I paced her. She's guttier than heck. Um, signed up for Wasatch with no trail running experience and That's trained up to it. Runs like did. in your family. <laughs> yeah, just stubborn as heck. Yeah. But um, she went and did Wasatch, and, like, she was really, really in a bad spot. And I remember going around the reservoir, and mm-hmm. it was just like, hey, babe, take 10 steps. Like, you can take yeah. 10. And you can take 15. You can take 20. Right. And we got to the last mile, and I just said, you know, this is the last mile. Like, do whatever you want. Just yeah. enjoy it. It's the last mile of Wasatch. And and so I, I allowed myself kind of do the same thing. It's like, this is the last mile of the slam, and, and really just soaking it in. And, and it, right. was, it was awesome. So all the way up to there um, was great. Like, I got to the road, and I thought, at the time, she told me, hey, if you finish this thing, if you run it out from Decker, you could go under 27 hours. And right. I thought, no, you're wrong, because I'm looking at my watch, and in my brain, I somehow through all the puking yeah figured that we started at 4 a.m but we started at 5 yeah your your math and was a little yeah, bit fuzzy at that point right <laughs> it was bad and, well, and, and i had made the decision i wasn't going to use gps on this race i okay. was going to go by time of day right and 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 so then i was just like every the other races had started at four and things were weird but right i was like no you're wrong we had a little argument and then i was like wait no you're right and then i thought wow and then this is where my ego kicks in. I thought, I could finish this faster than Scott Jurek did. Wow. I'm going to run. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Because Scott Jurek went like 27, Because that was, that was in something. the back of your mind, the start, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this thought just flies into, like, out of nowhere, where did, out of yeah, my exactly. head. Yeah, exactly. That like, just came out of blue, didn't it? It did, yeah. It was just kind of funny. And it was, it was really from Jeff Stowell's message because he oh, said okay. something like, yeah, 
Jerk blew up, but he still finished under thirty. Right. And I think I like looked him up, and it was like twenty seven twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, he he did it. I could probably yeah. I could still blow up and finish under thirty. So all of a sudden, this came flying in my head. You could finish faster than Jurek. So that's awesome. All of a sudden, like we're running, and, yeah, and we're just rolling through there. And, and I took hot chocolate at Decker Aid Station. Yeah. And I'm gonna try hot chocolate again. Dude, <laughs> it was like. It was unreal. It was it was the first thing that I'd eaten in 40 miles where I didn't immediately want to puke. And right. I felt a little bit of energy from the sugar. Yeah. And I don't know if, like, the warmth maybe unknotted my stomach or what, but, man, all of a sudden it was like, I feel like I could run. Right on. So we ran, and, and, and as we got to the road, like, when we started running, I was still skeptical. Because I remember pacing Matt Van Horn last year, and we were trying to get him under 23. Right. And it seemed like that section was longer than it was. It and is. We missed, it always feels yeah, that and, way. And, and we, missed, we missed by eight minutes, even though right. I thought we were on pace. Yeah. You know, we finished him at 23.08, and I was bummed because I thought we had him at, at just under. And I told my wife that. I said, you know, hon, I appreciate it, but this is longer than it seems. I remember pacing Matt. Like, let's right. just keep moving. So we just kept moving, and we got to the road, and I was well ahead of it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I did it. Like, yeah. This is it. I'm, I'm under 27, like everything. And I'm going to walk. And then I saw my dad's car, and it's just like, uh oh, <laughs> I got to run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and this is where I'll get emotional because I'm a softy. But, That's all right. But, uh, yeah, I just saw my dad and just thought I got to run. That's so rad. So you ran that road yeah. uphill even. Yeah, you, so ran it up, and he was cool. standing there, you know, with his prosthetic leg. Yeah. Just a total example to me because the part, you know, that we didn't start with was um, training before Western uh it's okay. You know, he had to, he right. had to get uh, his leg amputated. And for me, it was just like, man, if he can go through that, I, I can do this. Because yeah. I had doubts, you know, like, what's my hip going to do? What's right. all that stuff going to do? Sure. Even Western, like, what's the hamstring going to do? And I just told myself, like, no matter what, it's not worse than losing your leg, yeah. you know. Right. And if if your leg hurts, you better celebrate it, like, because you got a leg, right? Yeah. Like, when Amen. that thing hits the pavement and yeah. something, you know, yells back at you, then then you got to go. Right. And and instead of going, ouch, that sucks, go, hey, <laughs> you know, I got a leg. That's right. Yeah. So, you know, that kind of became the thing. And, and seeing him at the end was just awesome. And yeah. get her up and just run and give him a hug. And, and I asked him if he wanted to cross across the finish, but he didn't dare because he's still learning to work on that prosthetic. But, sure. But, uh Gave him a good hug and and uh, took some time there with him and then walked across with my family. So oh, it was, it was, it was awesome. awesome. It was really that cool. is awesome. That's I mean not just that experience but the whole thing mm-hmm. accumulating to that experience is right. awesome. What uh, it was, yeah. It was, I mean, and, you know, people say whatever they want. I was lucky, but I, there's there's more to it to me. I mean, Western States the lottery was my dad's birthday actually December fifth. Oh wow! I was adopted on my dad's birthday December fifth. They brought oh, me dude. home that day. So um, it's just a lot about me and my dad. Yeah, it really was. So That's there's awesome. there's so many good backstories yeah. that are just coming out in the last three minutes, <laughs> <All> right? <laughs> right? It really is. That's so cool, dude. Yeah, That's I, aw- that that was serendipitous ever. that you got into that event. <laughs> yep. it, it was meant to be. Yeah, I I, I really believe it was. Yeah. yeah, for for both of us for a lot of reasons. So yeah. yeah. So no, I, y- you finish, super emotional, cathartic, right? Because <laughs> okay. you're like, thank <laughs> yeah. God, this is all over <laughs> yeah. with, right? Yeah, yeah. What I mean, what was your immediate reaction at that point? I'm um, just. I was happy. I was. Good. I was. I was happier than I've ever been. I, I was glad to be done. Right. You know, I was. I, I was really, really tired, depleted. I there wasn't a lot going on upstairs. Like no. mentally, you kind of lose things when energy's basically saying, "Let's move legs and let's shut everything else off." Well, yeah, you're puking your guts out for sixty yeah. miles. There's not a whole lot of emotional reserves at that point. Yeah, right? it took me a while. And and the funny thing was, like, we we had a place to stay nearby. Yeah. And once I got calories in me and my brain started to come on, like my, my wife was making fun of me because I couldn't stop talking. I was just laying in this chair, like not moving and uh-huh. just going on and talking about random things nonstop. And yeah. she was just laughing at me. She's like, <laughs> you, you don't shut up now. Because I don't think I said Post two race words. fog where you're yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah. 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 but you've earned it. Yeah. So whatever. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Kenzie and I joke because we, we run so much together. We don't talk a lot. And we, we talked almost none at Wasatch. I when, right. I when I picked her up at Brighton, I said, babe, I'm so happy to be with you. I'm going to give you everything I've got, but I don't have much. Right. And then we maybe talked in those last like five miles, <laughs> and there was like nothing in between. <laughs> as far as you remember. As far as I remember. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She, she was singing. I mean, she was right. doing her thing and talking to other people and right. chatty Kathy, but I was yeah. just you know in the pain. So I think that brings up a good, a good, this is a good chance to say thank you to the unsung hero of your slam yeah. Oh, yeah your wife yep super supportive she might have been a little bit perturbed that you were getting all <laughs> the attention and that was hilarious when she brought that up yeah. on social media was I, I i was dying laughing thank you right yeah no absolutely hey, she's you know that number one to even let me do it and and knowing the state that i was in and knowing i, I would have told her she couldn't do it I, like right. I'm, I'm i probably restrict 
her more than she would ever even think about restricting me because I would have been like, you know what? Yeah, you're hurt. You can't really do this. But, right. you know, she was great to say yes, to say yes to everything, uh, you know, the time, the money, uh, all the training right. and giving up. I mean, it was a big deal because she um, had her name in the in Wasatch Lottery. Wasatch is a big deal to her. It was her first hundred. She really wanted to do Wasatch this year. So it was not right. only asking, will you support me, but will you pull your name out of the lottery right. for Wasatch? Oh, yeah. and, and because we knew that, you know, we weren't both going to run Wasatch. If I was ending the slam, she was going to pace me. She was going to be there for it. Right. Yeah. She wasn't going to be like, oh, I will do my race and we'll see you later. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, selfless um, the yeah. whole time and, and, and just, you know, couldn't ask for anything better. So that's, that's, awesome. that's cool. Because that's what a lot of people, I mean, we're sitting here talking about the 100 mile races, but like you said, there's a lot, of, there's the training. Yeah. Yeah. There's the travel. It's the sacrifice. There's the money. Oh, and by the way, we've got kids. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, yeah, lot that, of stuff going that, on. That's a there. complicated equation. Yeah, it really is. It's not just, hey, I'm going to hit these four races and I'll, right. you it, know, it's, it's more than algebra. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's right? <laughs> story problems. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I mean, she, if she didn't get it, that, you know, I, I doubt you'd find another spouse who who hasn't been out there been on the trails suffered through it knows what it is that would would land that type of sport right yeah. and if if there are spouses that are out there i mean kudos to them and there are i guess you know even maybe even more respect to those people but but yeah kenzie was just phenomenal um the whole time and she gets it and, yeah. and we get each other and it's our thing you know that, that's right every couple needs something that keeps them together and the trails has been our thing so and that's she's got cool. the bear coming she's got the got bear, the bear. yeah i get to return she's the been favor. a little bit worried about that just a touch yes yeah. she is at home right now freaking out so but Eric and I are calling it, so we've had the rain bear, we've had the snow bear, so what are we calling this one? We're calling it the nasty bear. The nasty bear I like is it. coming up this week. Because it's it going to be nasty. It's going <laughs> to thump a lot of people. Yeah. Course change last minute, weather yeah. change, weather. everything. Crazy. So. They're calling for up to seven inches of snow wow. up high right yeah. now. Unfortunately, she's lost a pacer. She oh. doesn't know who's going to crew. So she's, and you're probably yeah. not the best crew or <laughs> best pacer right now. You'd probably be great at crewing. <laughs> I, you know, I, I told her I'll do whatever you want, but the challenge, yeah. the big challenge for us, and, and again, complications, right? The pro- problem math is it's our son's 14th birthday, oh, race day. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be dad and yeah. take him and his buddies uh, for razor rides and have fun and play, and she's oh, going to be If suffering. you want, I'll t- I can take you care of that for you. <laughs> right. You can be with your wife. Yeah, right? exactly. That's the least you could do, right? So the plan is, you know, originally is I was going to pace her through the middle of the night and bring her in to the end. Right. Um, we were hoping for, you know, fingers crossed, maybe a twenty sub-26 finish for mm-hmm. her. Um, now with the time frames, we're still trying to figure this out because I think it just could getting be, to the later. finish, yeah, just getting the finish, mm-hmm. so. I think is going to be the important thing f- and getting there safely. Yep. Yeah, because it's that yeah. canyon's going to be nuts. Yeah. Well, good luck to her for sure. Yeah. Um, but we have a couple quick questions for you too. Okay. So, out of the four races you did, what's your favorite buckle of the four? Favorite buckle. Yep. West Western States. Western yeah. States. Right yep. on. That's awesome. Yeah, you can't. Uh, it's, it's I mean, to get storied, the chance right? to do it yeah. and then to come in and get the silver buckle was uh-huh. just mind-blowing. So that's the one that, yeah, when I look at them on my desk, that's the one that makes me smile. That's the one you put on often, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. What about what was your favorite course? Like from start to finish, overall, what was your favorite course? Um, hmm. You know, the there's, I don't know, like Wasatch is an unbelievable course. You know, the... I'm, I'm going to go with Wasatch. It, okay. it is just the the ranges that you're on nonstop are unreal. You know, right. it's, it's difficult. It's it's beautiful. It's everything. Um, Leadville has its moments. Like Hope Pass is unbelievable. Right. But there's everything in between. Right. <laughs> sure. So, and and you know, the Leadville is just such a great experience. But but you know, I don't know. There's something about running at home. Something about being up on those mountains that. Uh, right. I mean, I stare at them all day now. You know, I just think, man, I ran that. I was there. Whole freaking mountain. Yeah. I remember where I was. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So what you, you mentioned before we even got on the show, we're just kind of teasing around a little bit. But you said that what what's, what do you have next? What do you got coming up now? Besides next year. besides some R and R and uh, R and L- R. Kenzie's attention span is is short, so I don't think she'll make it to the end of this podcast. So I'm safe to say that I'm going to put in for UTMB because <laughs> I've got the points. So <laughs> maybe we'll move this to the front. <laughs> that was awesome. So I'm, I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that I'll be out there. That'd be awesome. That yeah, would be incredible. so cool. UTMB. That'd be nice. Yeah. If Go not, do that. you know, I I promised uh, Julian Carr that I'm going to do his discrete peak series next oh, yeah. year. That looks cool. He's that a looks great awesome. dude. Good yeah. company, and, and it looks like a lot of fun. So yeah, it I'll, does. I'll be. You know, picking some of those off. Right. Um, you know, f- only thing I'm committed to officially is uh, half Ironman in April okay. in California, say, uh, the Oceanside. So okay. you did that last year, right? yeah, or I did this it year? Last year. Yeah. 
It's uh, I got Kenzie to do it. You know, right. she she convinced me to get on the trails. I convinced her to do a half Ironman, and and she loved it. So we're going back there, and and obviously I'm loving the hundred miler. So, so it's working. Yeah, right on. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we we we're super impressed for with what you did. Maybe yeah. a little bit upset with you, you know. Hey, too. Everyone is, and that's okay. That comes with the territory. <laughs> it does. Uh, but it's a great story. I mean, uh, yeah. You know, and it's there's so much more that goes into it that we probably haven't even touched on. You know, some of the stories you had, but. Congratulations. Oh, thank That's you. That's awesome. Yeah. It was fun. It was like people think it's crazy. It, people who don't relate to it, like, why on earth would you do that? I I had such a fun summer, and yeah. it couldn't have gone better. I mean, even with the puking, why not? You know, why not have an ending like that? It was, yeah. it was great. I think like what you said earlier, when, when you get a little bit older, you're going to look back on this, and it's going to be really special. Yeah. Well, not. I mean, it's such an example for your family too. It is. You know, I mean, a lot of people. That's why I do. I'm not, I'm not racing anyone, right? I'm not fast enough to compete anything. But but knowing my kids, they yeah. they see me and and they know. I mean, my son was awesome. Like the whole time, he's like, "Dad, do you think you're gonna get the slam done? Like every every race, how was it? Do you think you're actually gonna do it? You know? Yeah. And and to be able to get done and tell them, yeah, I did it. You know? Yeah. It was really cool. Well, it's, awesome. it's something they'll take with them forever. Oh yeah. And, regardless. I mean, the, here's the best story ever. I got to slide one more in on you. Uh, at Leadville, you know. Day before the race, decided I'm going to go out and run just two miles shakeout. Yeah. And we're running up this hill, and you're at elevation, so you can't breathe. And my son has done triathlons. He did like three last year and has had a cool coach. But this year, he decided he wanted to do mountain biking. So he hasn't been training as much as he normally would. And we're running out there. And I'm like, I'm going to do a mile out, mile back. And we're like halfway up the hill, and he's struggling. He's like, I'm going to go back. I'm like, yeah, just run back. It's cool. I'm just going to go a mile. So I keep running. And I get to the mile, I turn around, and there he is right behind me. <laughs> and I thought, I thought he went back. And he says, well... Dad, I figured if I'm one day going to beat all of your 100 mile times, I can't oh, quit. Well, that's yeah. awesome. And so it was just like to me that was one of the highlights of the whole summer. Heck so. Yeah. And he's got a he's got a built-in coach down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. built-in coach for those things. Example of uh, you got to try everything. So. That's right. And put your best foot forward. Well, again, thanks for uh, for taking the time with us. Uh, you know, being on the Love show. The podcast. Yeah. Well, we, we appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but one thing we'll mention real quick too is you got your uh, Wasatch Mountain Wrangler hat on. Yep. yep. But you have. And I'm sorry, but you've got the rocking shirt right now. Yeah, it's we're gonna have to get a picture. The screaming we'll get eagle. A picture. The screaming the eagle. Screaming eagle. And, and Joel pegged it in front of the Tetons. Yep. It's a long sleeve. Looks kind of techy, like a tech tee. Kind of smooth and silky. Yeah, smooth <laughs> oh, and silky. Oh uh, yes. That's his party shirt. Back um, half Barlow in the smooth <laughs> silky screaming eagle. shirt. That's right. Yeah, that's so, right. <laughs> so we'll get a picture of this, but it looks good. Yeah, yeah this was this you. was the one that I took a little bit of flack for. Uh, Francesco Perry called me the tie dye hippie uh, pirate. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it ended up in my bag somehow, and I finished Wasatch with it, so I thought it appropriate to wear it today. Absolutely. Well, not only that, but what do you get out. for doing the slam? Oh, you get the eagle. There yeah. you go. It matches. It lines so, up. You get the bronze eagle. So, so you can tell you're a matchy-matchy guy because your shoes match your right. shirt. Yeah. Right? He, he, picked put that. he put that <laughs> out. He put it all together. <laughs> pulled that out last <laughs> he night. He's, He's like, all right, got a show tomorrow. <laughs> So, yeah, thanks for taking the time yeah, to join us. You. Um, Absolutely. You know, we really appreciate it. Good luck in whatever you do. Good luck to Kenzie with her race. Mm -hmm. And uh, good luck to your son beating your times. Cause yeah. I was going to do it. You guys wait. Yeah. Because you've set, you've set a stout, some stout times yeah, there for him. So Sub-24 slam, Jonah Barlow, one day. All right. right on. Got it. All right. right. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Uh, good luck. And uh, enjoy the R&R and R&R. &R &R &R. Thank you for listening to the Trail Manners podcast. We would like to thank Tommy, back half Barlow, for joining us today in Studio 78 here at the Wasatch 100 start line. We'd like to encourage everybody to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Trail Manners or swing by the website at trailmanners.com. Once you're there, check out our store page. Don't forget to pre order yourself a beanie. Uh, we got some sweatshirts coming online, some hoodies, we got some shirts. You name it. Why don't you help out, support the cause? Um, you can also get a hold of us on the contact page. Let us know what you want to see, who you want to hear or even if you would like to be on our show. Until next time, this is Eric Manning with Joel Hatch reminding you, you don't get what you wish for, you get what you work for. Now go get it. <laughs>